Hello everybody, welcome to game number 41 in the Washington Nationals replay. They lost three of four at Dodger Stadium, ended their West Coast road trip, took the day off to travel, and now we're here on a Tuesday on May the 14th, and they start a home series with the New York Mets. And since we're starting a new series, what I'd like to do is show who's available for the Mets so we know who we've got available and who we don't. Nationals have not made any player roster moves, so their lineup is the same as it was against the Dodgers. Let's look at the bench players for the Mets, and they've got quite a few. From the left side of the plate, they have Dominic Smith. And then from the right side of the plate, you have Juan Lagares, Keon Broxton, J.D. Davis, Thomas Nito, and Adeni Hechevarria. So those are all the bench players for the Mets. And let's look at their bullpen. They have two, they have a, one lefty and a bunch of righties. And the lefty is an extra player I had to use as a PDF, and that is Daniel Zamora. He only pitched an eight and two thirds inning, but he was on the roster during this series. The right handers Drew Gagnon, Seth Lugo, Tyler Bashler, Robert Giselman. Jairus Familia, and Edwin Diaz. That's their bullpen. Those are the bullpen pitchers available for the Mets. Only one lefty. Let's look at the starting lineup for the Mets. Jeff McNeil will be leading off. He'll be playing left field. Ahmed Rosario is a shortstop. He will hit second. Robinson Cano bats second and plays in, bats third. Plays second and bats third. Pete Alonzo, cleanup at first base. Michael Conforto in right field will hit fifth. Wilson Ramos, the catcher, will hit sixth. Brandon Nemo at short. I'm sorry, in center, will hit seventh. I don't know where I got short from. The Todd father, Todd Frazier, will bat third. Well, I'm sorry, will bat eighth and play third. Getting dyslexic here. And on the mound is Noah Syndergaard, batting ninth. Starting pitcher for the Nationals will be Jeremy Hellickson. And Hellickson's had a rough go of it in the replay. We'll look at his replay stats. And Hellickson checks in 0-1 with a 6.03 ERA, 31 and a third innings, 24 hits, 24 run. I'm sorry, 21 runs, 14 walks, and 22 strikeouts. Defensively for the Nationals, it'll be Soto in left, Robles in center, Eaton in right, Rendon at third, Defoe at short, Dozier at second, Parr at first, and Jan Gomes uh, on or behind the plate rather. In the standings. The Mets are closing in on the Nationals. Nationals are now 24 and 16. The Mets are 21 and 18, just two and a half games back. And then you can see Philadelphia and Atlanta are also closing in a little bit more. So things are tightening up here in the National League East. Nationals need to be aware of these things. I'm sure they are. It's just a matter of getting it done. All right, so for the Mets, leading things off will be Jeff McNeil. And let's see here. I may need an additional light, so let's try this. It's bright sunshine outside, but I'm getting some shadows, so I want to make sure that it's showing up okay on the camera. So let's see with that extra light. Does that do any good at all? I guess it can't hurt. All right, so we're going to leave it like that. And Jeff McNeil will lead off. He's hitting 307, six homers and 16 runs driven in. And like I said, the majority of this has been generated by the Strat computer. The only inside pitch versions is when the Mets played on inside pitch earlier. So majority of this, uh, this is going to be the Stratomatic PC on their stats for the Mets. Of course, for the Nationals, the majority of it's going to be inside pitch. All right, so here we go. Hellickson to McNeil. Game one, game 41 is now underway. 2-3 on Hellickson is a range play. So we go to McNeil for the range check. 3-3, three, three, and that's against a right-hander as a ground ball to first. That's Gerardo Parra. His range is a 3. One to three, he gets to it. Four, five, or six, it gets by him. And he gets to it. So if Parra makes the play, and he'll flip to Hellickson covering three to one. And we're underway. Here's the shortstop, Ahmed Rosario. 272 on his average. Two homers, 15 runs driven in. And if you can hear the noise in the background, it looks like a motorcycle gang of some kind. Looks like about 10 or 12 motorcycles just rode by. 
I got the windows down, even though it's a nice day to try to cut the noise down, but kind of hard to cut out those motorcycles. All right, here is Rosario. 5-1 is a strikeout chance on Helixon's card. 13 is too much, though. So Rosario will swing. 1-3, and it's a star 4, which is a ground ball to short for out number 2. And this has been Helixon's modus operandi. He has started out the first couple innings very well, and then he finds that one inning that he just implodes, and it ruins his whole game. So see if this continues. Here's Robinson Cano. He's hitting 324, 8 homers, and 36 driven in. 4-6. That's the ballpark card going to Nationals Park for Cano. 6-3. It's a star 1, which is a ground ball to Rendon at third, and it's an easy inning for Helixson. 1-2-3. We go to the bottom of the first. It is the Mets nothing and the Nationals coming to bat. And we'll look at the Nationals starting lineup. That will be facing Noah Syndergaard. It'll be Eaton leading off in right field, followed by Robles, Soto, Rendon, Para, Dozier, Gomes, and Defoe, with Helixson batting ninth. Defensively for the Mets, McNeil in left, Nemo in center, Conforto in right. Frazier at third, Rosario at short, Cano at second, Alonzo at first, and Ramos behind the dish. Taking the offerings of Noah Syndergaard, and on the replay for Noah Syndergaard, he is 3-4 with a 3.45 ERA, 47 innings pitch, 44 hits, 26 runs, only 18 of them earned, 16 walks, and 42 on the strikeouts. All right, so Adam Eaton steps in, hitting 276, 6 homers, and 27 driven in. 3-3 is a possible error on a throw. Eaton 3-1 is a single to left field, so no throw is going to be needed. It will just be a base hit. And if it was an error check, that's a 10, and McNeil's only a 6, so it wouldn't have been an error anyway. But Eaton is aboard. He's got a chance to try to get a jump. Noah Syndergaard is a plus 4, allowing runners to get a jump. So that's huge. That makes his attempt up to a 6. And it's a 7, so it's potential hit and run. And I think they're going to do the hit and run with Robles because Eaton can steal. If he, if he strikes out, Eaton's got a great chance to steal. So a hit and run chance for Robles. Syndergaard, 1-5 is a strikeout chance. That's a 16. It's too high, so Robles will swing. That's a 2-4, and that's a fly to center. So that means he's out of there as Nimmo puts it away, and Eaton has to retreat back to first base. Roll again for the strategy roll to see if he can get a jump. Seven, it's again another hit and run. Now I think they're going to eschew the hit and run this time. Just go play it straight up. Syndergaard, 3-3 three, three is, a, is a possible error on a throw for Juan Soto's at bat. 5-6, he's going to pop it up to first. That's out number two. There is no throw to worry about. So two up and two down since that leadoff single. Brings up Rendon. He's hitting 301, seven homers, 19 driven in. Strategy roll again. Three. This time Eaton's going to get a chance to steal. Eaton steals at a 17. Plus two from Syndergaard makes it a 19. Ramos is a plus two as well. Makes it a 21. Well, obviously you can't have a, a guaranteed steal, but it comes a 19. So anything other than a 20, basically, and he will steal it. And he does. So stolen base for Eaton. He steals second base. And that brings up Rendon again. Nothing on the strat roll. We're not going to have him steal third, I don't believe. I don't think we're going to have... He, in fact, he can't steal third, I don't think. Well, he could, but we're not, we're not going to go there. All right, so send a guard to Rendon. 1-3 is a strikeout plus chance, and he got him to end the inning. So no runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. After one complete from Nationals Park, it's no score between the Mets and the Nationals. But the Nationals are certainly happy to be home and on the East Coast. That West Coast road trip did not do them any favors, particularly in Dodger Stadium. All right, Pete Alonzo to lead off. He's hitting 259, 12 homers, 25 driven in. Helixson, 5-5 five is a strikeout chance, but 17 is too much. Alonzo, 2-4. Ground ball to first, and Para will take it to the bag himself. One down, and that's going to send up Michael Conforto, the right fielder. And Conforto 
These cards are sticking on me a little bit. I haven't used the Mets in a while now. They've gotten kind of where they don't want to separate. Conforto struggling at 139. I don't know how he's doing so low on the Strat replay, but he is. 139, six homers and 15 driven in. Hellickson, 3-6 is a walk plus, and that will be a base on balls to Conforto. So Conforto is aboard. His attempt is a 1 plus 1 from Hellickson, makes him a 2. And it is a 2, so Conforto will get a chance to steal. He's a 16, plus the 1 there is a 17. Gomes is a minus 1 and makes it a 16. 1 to 16, he's in there. It's so a 1, he's in there in a possible throwing error on Gomes. Gomes' throwing error rating is a 7. But that's not going to be an error. It's just going to be a stolen base on Confort for Conforto. He steals second base for Wilson Ramos now with one out and a runner at second. Alexson to Ramos, 5-4. Against a lefty, it'd be a straight-up home run, but against a righty, it is blank. Go to Ramos, 5-5. Five, five. He's going to single to left field. Can that score Conforto on an S7? To score from second base on an S7, you add one to the run rating of Conforto, which is a total of four. It becomes a five. Left fielder arm Soto is a zero. So one to five, and he will make it. And he does. So Conforto scores the first run of the game. RBI single from Wilson Ramos. And the Mets lead it one to nothing. For Brandon Nimmo, Nimmo hitting 263, seven homers, 23 driven in. Hellickson, 5'6. Walk plus to a righty, but to a lefty, it is blank. So Nimmo gets to swing. 3 4, and he's going to double to left field. Wow, they're starting to get to Hellickson early, much earlier than usual. A double to left to score from first. You lose one on the base running rating. Ramos is already slow as molasses, so that makes him a zero. So he cannot get there at all. He will have to stop at third base. He just runs that slowly. So runners are at second and third with one out, and the infield is going to have to come in for Todd Frazier. They could walk Frazier and pitch to Syndergaard, but the, they would do that if there were two outs. But with only one out, I think they're going to just play the infield in and try to get something that way. Try to keep Ramos right where he is. 5-5 five, is a strikeout chance. 14 is too high. Frazier, 4-1, is a star 4, and that is a ground ball to short, and that's going to freeze the runner. Two down, because that would make Ramos a minus 1, so he could not even attempt. So he will be out of there. And now that brings up Syndergaard, who bats left-handed, throws right-handed, but bats left-handed. Keep that in mind. Hellickson, 6-5, is a strikeout chance, and he got him. So Hellickson gets out of the inning without any more damage, but one run is in on two hits. No errors and a man left. We go to the bottom of the second. one nothing Mets as the Mets try to climb closer to the first place in the National League East against the Nationals. Game two of the series kind of favors the Nationals a little bit more. You have Patrick Corbin against Wilmer Font. And Font for the Mets. He's actually carded with Toronto because I think that's where he ended up. But uh, he's with the Mets in this particular part of the season. So Gerardo Parra will lead off the bottom of the second. Parra hitting an even 200 in limited duty. No homers and one driven in. 1-3 is a blank against a lefty batter. To Parra, 2-4. He's going to star three it, which is a ground ball to Rosario at short. One down for Brian Dozier. He's hitting 239, four homers and 12 driven in. 2 6, strikeout chance, and he got him. Second strikeout for Thor. Two down for Jan Gomes. He's hitting 234, four homers and 11 driven in. 4 6, strikeout chance, seven, got him. So Syndergaard, an easy 1 2 3 inning with a couple of strikeouts. We go to the third, still 1 0 Mets. And for the Mets, it'll be the top of the order. McNeil, followed by Rosario and Cano. Keep an eye on Hellickson. Short leash. Eric Fetty is a long man. Of course, they were off yesterday, so all their bullpen guys are well-rested. Here's McNeil. 
Four six is the ballpark card going to Nationals Park. One five, and that's a star five, which is a fly to center. One away as Robles puts it away. That brings up Rosario. Four two is a blank against a right hander. Five one, he's going to pop it up to Dozier at second, two down for Robinson Cano. Four two. Straight up home run chance against a lefty batter. His home run's a nine. That's a six. It is gone. Robinson Cano, home run number nine, RBI number 37. And the Mets lead it two to nothing here at Nationals Park. Robinson Cano goes deep. Hellickson bitten by the gopher ball. Here is Alonzo. Two six hit by a pitch, 17. He will plunk him. It's a 21 minus the 4 is an 18, but that's a 17, so that's a hit by the pitch. And anytime we get a hit by the pitch right after a home run, we have warnings issued by the home plate umpire. And now the next hit by pitch is going to be an automatic ejection for either side, as both benches have been warned. It's too coincidental to have a hit by pitch right after a home run. So let's see, Alonzo does not have any attempt to steal, so no strategy roll. Here's Conforto, 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four is the ballpark card going right back to Nationals Park for Conforto. 5-5 five, five is a star three. Ground ball to Dozier, and the inning is over. But the home run by Cano gives the Mets a 2-0 lead as we go. Whoops, and that thing just, my little stand just kind of shimmied on me there for a second. Sorry about that. I must have bumped it. That The screw in there is just not holding like it's supposed to. I think it's kind of gotten, I don't know what you call it. It's kind of gotten, uh, oh, what's the word for it? Like it's gotten threaded or whatever they call it. Um, it's just not grabbing like it needs to. So hopefully, now that's stabilized, I'm hoping. Hope we don't have any more of those little collapses. So we shall see. All right, so bottom of the third we go. Syndergaard now with a 2-0 lead to protect. And leading off for the Nationals will be Wilmer Defoe. And boy, the Nationals can't wait to get Trey Turner back. They certainly miss his, his energy at the top of the lineup. Defoe, though, hitting 239, two homers, 11 driven in. 2-6 strikeout chance, and he got him. That's three strikeouts in a row for Noah Syndergaard. I bring up the pitcher, Hellickson. 3-2 is a blank. We go to Hellickson's card. He does not have his own hitting card. He's using a generic pitcher hitting card. 6-5 is a star one, which is a ground ball to second. Two down for Adam Eaton. 3-1 is a strikeout chance. 11 is too much. Go to Eaton. 6-2, that's a single past third base. Eaton is two for two, and he will be looking to get a jump again because of that plus four for Syndergaard. Seven is another hit and run chance, but with two outs, I don't think you're going to do that. So I'm just going to play it straight up. Syndergaard, four, six, strikeout chance, and he got him. Inning is over. No runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. We go to the fourth. Two nothing Mets over the Nationals, and a short leash, I imagine, for Mr. Hellickson. But you couldn't pinch hit for him there. You can't wear your bullpen out in the first game of the series. So they're going to see if he can get him maybe five innings possible without allowing any more runs. Here's Ramos. Hellickson 6-1 is a range play. We go to Ramos for that range play. 5-3 is a pop out to second. We're doing the range of Dozier. He's only a two. This could drop. Nope, Dozier gets to it. He went out to right field and snow coned it just before it hit the ground. And Ramos is out of there. Brings up Brandon Nimmo. Nimmo doubled his last time up. Drove in the first run of the game. 6-5 is a strikeout chance. 15, though, is too much. Go to Nimmo. 3-2. Star 4. It's a ground ball to short. Defoe is there. Two down. For Todd Frazier. 1-5, home run question mark, 1-14, to 14, that passes. So Frazier has a 1-10 to 10 for a home run. 1-10 to 10 is a home run for Frazier. 
It is a 10. Right on the button. Home run. Todd Frazier. How about that? Helixson thought he was out of trouble, but he gives up the long ball. He is susceptible to that long ball. And now here's Syndergaard. Helixson, 2-5. Ball one. Three six is a walk plus, but let's see. Plus, it's a five. The plus makes it a 15. The stadium makes it a 16. That is a walk. So he does walk Syndergaard. That's a definite red flag. Here's McNeil. Three four. McNeil's a lefty swinger, so that's going to be a blank. Go to McNeil. Three one. He lines it hard, but right at par to end the inning. And that may be all for Helixson. That's a Starting to get hit pretty hard right now. One run on one hit, no errors, and a man left. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It is three nothing Mets. Single runs in the second, third, and fourth. So Helixson may be just about done. They do have Eric Fetty loosening in the bullpen, their long reliever. Here's Juan Soto to face Syndergaard. 2 2, strikeout chance, but 12 is too much. Go to Soto, 3-6. He's going to ground it to Cano at second base. One down. Brings up Anthony Rendon. 5-6, strikeout chance. He got him. Two down. So Syndergaard just casually going along here. 1-1, one, one, blank. We go to Para. 4-6, and that's a fly to left to end the inning. Another 1-2-3 inning. So far, Adam Eaton's the only one that's been able to figure him out. We go to the fifth, still three nothing. Still three to nothing. Let's see, 19 batters faced. Helixson can face 22. So he's right on the precipice of being tired. But I think they're gonna let him start out anyway, see how he does. If he gets into trouble, probably gonna be lifted. Rosario, 6-5, strikeout chance. He's not tired yet, so that will get him. Seven right there and a seven right there. So Rosario. Out on strikes, here's Robinson Cano. He homered his last time up. 4-6 is the ballpark card. Got a chance another homer, potentially. 3-2, though. That's a rare play. It's a blank. So we're going to the Replay Baseball Rare Play book. Replay Baseball Rare Play book. And we're looking at bases empty. And... One out, rolling two D6s, and add them up. We get a two. Base is empty, one out, and a two. So roll a two. Base is empty, one out. Steady rain moves in. Game is called after long delay. If teams have completed four and a half innings, the home team is leading the game as an official game. Well, I don't have any... Uh, we haven't played the five innings, so it wouldn't be an official game, and I'm not going to restart it, so... We're just going to ignore that result and keep going because it is as played. If I was doing just a random, like, tenacious type league, that would be a rain out, but we're not doing that. So clouds come by, but it skips outside of Nationals Park, and they can keep playing. 4-2, and they probably wish they hadn't because that's that home run result again from Helixson to Cano, but this time 17 is too much, so Cano cannot go deep, but he will get the swing. 2-2, and that's a ground ball to short for out number two. So two down for Pete Alonzo. 1-3 is blank. We go to Alonzo's card. 4-4, four, four, he's going to fly to center, and that's definitely going to do it for Helixson. He's going to go five innings and give up three runs, all earned. Gives up four hits. He walks two, and he hit a batter, and he struck out two. So mediocre outing at best for Helixson, and Eric Fetty will be the new pitcher in for the Nationals in the top of the sixth. So bottom of the fifth we go. Dozier steps to the plate. Syndergaard, large and in charge so far, leaving three to nothing. 
And we get a 2-5 on Syndergaard. Double question mark against a right-hander. 1-16 to is a single. That's a 6. So Dozier gets a base hit. So finally, someone other than Adam Eaton can get a base hit. Dozier's an attempt of 1, but the plus 4 makes it a 5. Nothing happening, though. Here's Gomes. Syndergaard, 6-5. And that's a home run question mark to Gomes. 1-7, to it passes, but that's a 20, so no home run chance. Gomes does get the swing, 5-2, and he flies to left. One down, and that's going to bring up Wilmer Defoe. And on the bench for the Nationals, they have only right-handed hitters. That's all they have on their bench. So we'll see who it's going to be. If, it, if more people get on base, they'll use Kendrick. If it's just a runner on first and two outs, they'll probably use Sanchez. Strategy roll. Nothing happening. Send the guard to Defoe, 5-4. That is a range check. Go to Defoe, 6 5, star 4. That is a ground ball to first. Range of Alonzo is a 4. And he gets to it. Could it be a double play? We'll find out. Double play rating of Defoe is a 2. Nothing there. The pivot at short is a 0. So it has to be a 1 or a 2 for a double play. It is not. It is a 5. 5 is greater than Dozier's run rating. Because Dozier is a 5, but being halfway, it drops to a 4. So it ends up being a 3-6 fielder's choice. So now with just a runner at first and two down, they don't want to use their best pinch hitters. They're going to save them for later innings. So they're going to use Adrian Sanchez to pinch hit for Hellickson. Adrian Sanchez. He will pinch hit here in the 5th. Let's see, runner on first is now Defoe. He's got an attempt of one, but again, the plus four makes an attempt of five. Nothing happening, so Sanchez will bat. 6-3, strikeout chance, and he struck him out. So Sanchez really had no chance on that with that one being there. That was an automatic strikeout. He had no, no recourse for that. So a tough break there for Sanchez. Nationals, no runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. We go to the sixth, still 3-0, and Eric Fetty is going to be your new pitcher for the Nationals. It will be Eric Fetty, or will it? Let's see. Actually, you know what? It's not going to be Eric Fetty because the Mets have two lefties coming up, so I think they're going to go to Doug Jennings, or Dan Jennings. I don't know where I got Doug Jennings from. Doug Jennings was a backup outfielder for the Oakland A's back in the 80s and 90s. I don't think there's a relation there. Could be wrong, but I don't think there's a relation there. All right, so it's not going to be Fetty. It's going to be Jennings. And you got to pitch Jennings eventually, and this is as good a time as any to pitch him. So Jennings is going to be on. He is one of the extra players, so I had to print him off with the PDF version, which is a little bit smaller. At least back then I didn't. I, I know how to do it now to be the same size, but back then I didn't. So what are you going to do? So Hellickson's day is done. Jennings is in to face Conforto. Lefty on lefty matchup. 1-6 is a strikeout plus. He got him. So Jennings gets the strikeout of Conforto. And that brings up Wilson Ramos. 4-3. And that's a ball one. 1-5 one is a walk plus, And he will draw the walk. Ramos has no attempt. So he can't go anywhere. Another lefty on lefty for Brandon Nimmo. Jennings, 4-1 is the ballpark card. We're going to Nationals Park. 6-5, that's a single to center field. Single to center field. And let's check the runner advancement. Ramos, again, doesn't run well at all. He only runs at a 1, so not likely he can go anywhere. Single to center to get from first to 30, lose 1. So, yeah, he can't go anywhere. It'd be a negative 1 result. So he has to hold. So runners at first and second for Todd Frazier, who homered his last time up. Do you stick with Jennings? This is his fourth batter. He gets tired after four batters. So do you stick with him here, or do you bring in a right-hander? Tough decision here. I think they're going to have to pull him. They, they can't take any chances. So Jennings is going to go a third of an inning. He gives up a hit and a walk and a strikeout and potentially a run. 
potentially two runs because both runners are his responsibility. And when they go to the bullpen, it will be Justin Miller to try to get out of the mess. So Justin Miller will be on. Try to get out of this mess with Todd Frazier. No strategy roll because Miller doesn't have any pickoff or pickoff error chances or balk chances. Infield double play depth. Miller to Frazier. 1 3 is an automatic out. That's a star line. And that's a three, which means it's a fly to right for out number two, and Ramos has no chance. He's a one, and Eaton's a minus two arm. So he has to hold. And that brings up Syndergaard. Miller, 5-1, going to the ballpark again, Nationals Park. 2-5 is a question mark seven. One to 15 is a hit, but that's a 16. So it ends up being a deep fly to left by Syndergaard. He just missed a chance for a home run. But the inning's over. And Jennings gets out of it with no runs allowed. Miller goes two-thirds of an inning and retires both batters he faces. So for the Mets, no runs, a hit, no errors, and two left. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Still 3 nothing in favor of the Mets. Syndergaard back out. He has faced 18 batters. He can face 24, so he's still good to go. Nationals will have the top of the order. Had him eaten. He's two for two. He's figured to send a guard out so far. Four one is a walk plus, and he reaches again. So third time on base, third time to charm. He's going to try to steal again. Attempt of the six. Up oh, can't do it this time. Can't quite get that jump. So Victor Robles, the batter. Infield is halfway. 2-6, strikeout chance, but 20 is too much. Robles gets to swing. 2-4, fly to center. And Nimmo puts it away. One down for Juan Soto. Strategy roll this time. Eaton can try to steal. That's a three, so he will steal. He's attempt of, or stolen base of 17. 17 plus the two. We already figured it was going to be a 20. The only way he's out is if, is if it's a 20. Two, it's a chance for a throwing error on Ramos. He's got an error rating of six. And it is a throwing error. So it's a stolen base plus a throwing error on Ramos. E2. So Ramos with the throwing error puts Eaton at third base with only one out. Syndergaard looks a little frustrated. And Soto back up. We'll roll strategy again. Nothing happening. So Syndergaard to Soto. Infield is back. They'll give up the run to get the out. 4-3. Might give up two runs. Look at this. That's a straight-up home run chance. Soto's a 15. That's a 15. It is gone. Juan Soto, a two-run homer. Homer number nine. RBIs 26 and 27. And just like that, the lead is cut to 3-2. to two. A two-run homer from Juan Soto. And boy, they've been missing his bat in the lineup. He comes through with a two-run homer. 3-2 to two game. And here's Rendon. 2-1, strikeout plus, got him. Boy, Rendon's had a rough day. Three, he got the hat trick on all three strikeouts. Oh, that's only two outs, my bad. I was, I was trying to shortchange the Nationals. That's only two outs. What am I doing? Para gets the bat. 5-6, struck him out. Didn't matter. Now we're done. Two runs on one hit, one error, and nobody left. The runs are earned, though, because... He would have scored on the home run anyway, no matter if it was a throwing error or not. But the Nationals pick up two. And we go to the seventh. It is three to two Mets as we start the seventh inning. And let's see what we've got here for the Mets. We have Jeff McNeil to lead off. Top of the order, McNeil, Rosario, and Cano. So we've got a couple of left, two out of three lefties. So that means the Nationals will go to a lefty out of their pen. It'll be Matt Grace. So the lefty Matt Grace is on. They've already used Jennings a lefty. That leaves Doolittle is the only lefty remaining. But Matt Grace is on to try to keep the score at 3-2. to two. Grace to McNeil. 6-4. And that's a strikeout plus against a left-hander. And he will get him. So that's one away. 
Brings up Ahmed Rosario. 3-4, that's a range play. Go to Rosario. 3-3, three, three. that's a star three. Ground ball to third, range of Rendon, he's a four. And he makes the play easily. Two down for Robinson Cano. 6-1 is a strikeout chance against Cano. That's a nine against lefties. He strikes out as a nine, so he is gone. So Matt Grace does what he needs to do. He pitched just one inning, got two strikeouts, and didn't give up anything. That's the best that Dave Martinez could ask. Seventh inning stretch time here at Nationals Park. It's the Mets three and the Nationals two. And we'll check on Syndergaard and see how much longer he can go. As we go to the bottom of the seventh, Nationals, let's see, he has faced 23 batters. He can face 24, so he can face Dozier, but then starting to Gomes, he gets tired. So the bullpen for the Mets is active, and it looks like they have in their bullpen, Seth Lugo is loosening in the bullpen. But they're going to start with Syndergaard and see how far he can go facing Dozier. 6-4. That's a range play at Nationals Park. 4-5. That's a home run to the pull side. And that's a 1, so it's gone. Dozier. Don't have to worry about the range now. It is gone. It is gone out of there. Big Dozier with the home run is 5th of the season. And that has tied the game at 3. And I wonder if that's going to be all for Syndergaard right there. I think that's going to do it. He's going to go 6-plus. And he's going to give up five hits, three runs, all earned. Let's check his walks and his strikeouts. He walked one, struck out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Struck out nine. And Seth Lugo will take over. Let's check where Lugo is going to be batting. That's a ways before the pitcher hits, so no double switch. It'll just be a straight up Seth Lugo entering the ball game. Seth Lugo, and on the 2019 season, he was 7-4, 2-7-0 ERA, and six saves. So he, his job is to hold the fort. We are tied at three now in the bottom of the seventh. 1-5, possible throwing error. Gomes, 4-5, single to short, so no throw to worry about. That's just going to be a single. There is no throw on the play. He's got an attempt of one, but Lugo's a minus one, so no strategy roll employed. Here's Defoe. Five, four is a strikeout plus, but the 20 isn't going to be too high because a strikeout plus making a 19, but that 20 misses. So Defoe gets the swing. One, three. He's going to single to right field. So how about that? Gomes, go from first to third on a single. You gain two to your base running rating. Gomes is a two, he becomes a four. Right fielder arm Conforto is a minus two, drops him to a two. So one or two, he will make it. Six, somebody's out. To one, he makes it. How about that? How about that? He makes it. So runners are at the corners now. When it's a one, you can check the trail runner, but three and a three, he has to beat this number, I think, not tie it. I think he's got to – actually, no, I think, I think he can go to second. I think that's correct. Hope I'm not – hope I'm doing that correctly. But I think he can take second on the throw if his base running rating is less – is the same or equal to – or greater than equal to this. So Defoe is now at second. And now we need a pinch hitter for Grace. And it's going to be Howie Kendrick. So Howie Kendrick is on. He will pinch hit for Matt Grace. Here in the seventh. And Lugo has struggled, giving up two hits in a row. Runners are at second and third with nobody out. The infield is going to have to come in. 3-5. And that's the ballpark card going to Nationals Park. Five, six, ground ball to short. Lead runner Gomes is a two, but with the infield in, he's a zero. So he has to hold. He cannot make it. 
So Kendrick is out of there. One down. Runner still at second and third with one out. For Adam Eaton. Infield still in. 5-4. Strikeout plus, and he got him. Big strikeout there for Lugo. Two down. Now the infield can go back to normal for Victor Robles. 2-1. Range play. Robles, 6-1. Fly to center. The range of Nimmo is a 3. And he, he got it. How about that? A 3. Nimmo saved probably two runs there. Almost assuredly two runs were saved on that. Innings over, but the Nationals do tie it. A run on three hits, no errors, and two left. So the runner moving up to second really didn't matter in the greater scheme of things. I'm thinking I played that right. If I played it wrong, please let me know, and I'll make a note of it. But I think I'm okay with that. So that's going to be all for Lugo. He's going to go one inning, and he's going to give up no runs. Did give up two hits. Got a strikeout. But now... He is the pitcher of record so far. As Syndergaard gets a no decision as he gave up that tying third run. So now we need a new pitcher for the Nationals here in the eighth because they pinch hit for Matt Grace. So we'll see who the new pitcher is for the Nationals. And I believe it may be the aforementioned Eric Fetty. Or do you go to, and you know what? They're going to go to, hmm, who do you go to here? They're going to go to Fetty. They're going to take a chance and go to Fetty. Eric Fetty is on. Eric Fetty. And he'll be facing Pete Alonzo. So welcome, Mr. Fetty, to the game. You get to face Pete Alonzo in your first at bat. 2-5. Strikeout chance. 17, though, is too high. So Alonzo gets the swing. 3-6. He's going to double to left field. Boy. Welcome to the game, Mr. Fetty, a leadoff double for Pete Alonzo. And that'll bring up Conforto. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Fetty to Conforto, 6-4. And that is a walk plus, so he will walk Conforto. And all of a sudden, he's in deep trouble. First two runners are on. Nobody out for Wilson Ramos, who's a horrible bunter. He would normally bunt in this situation, but he's so bad, they're going to have to have him swing away. I don't think you want to pinch it for him. So here is Fetty to Ramos. Now, the good part is for Fetty, he is a plus one on double play grounder if he can get a ground ball. Five, six is a possible error. Ramos, three, two, and that is a ground ball to second. And with a one there, that's an automatic error, even though Dozier's only a three. So it's a ground ball to second, but Dozier boots it. Could have been a double play, possibly. But instead, it's an E4, and it's going to load the bases. So Nationals defense letting down their pitching staff. That could have been a double play. And now the bases are loaded with nobody out, and the infield is going to have to come in. They can't afford to go up any runs. They're going to have to try to cut that run off. Nothing on the strat roll. Here's Fetty to Nimmo. 2-4, and that's a range play at the ballpark. 5-2 is a double to center, but the range of Robles could take that double away. He has to get to this. It would be a three or less he gets to it. And he does. So he makes the catch. Is it a sacrifice fly? He's a sacrifice fly rating of three. And it will be a sacrifice fly. So sacrifice fly there to bring home the slow running Alonzo. And now let's check and see if Conforto can take third. You do lose three on your base running rating. He's a four, becomes a one. Robles is a minus one, so Conforto cannot move up. He doesn't have that opportunity. So now runners at first and second with one out and one in. Mets lead it now four to three. And here's Todd Frazier. Nothing on the strat roll. They're looking for the double play if they can get it. Fetty, two, one. Against the right-hander is a walk chance. That's a three. He will walk Frazier to load the bases. And now we'll get a pinch hitter for Lugo. And uh, let's see who the pinch hitter is going to be. And there might be a new pitcher for the Nationals as well as Fetty is struggling. So let's look at the bench for the Nationals. I'm sorry, for the Mets. And they're going to bring in Dominic Smith, their pinch hitter. So 
So Dominic Smith is going to pinch hit for Lugo. Dominic Smith. And now the only lefty on the Nationals bench is their closer. Doolittle, I don't think you want to go there. Fetty is not tired yet, but he certainly is struggling. So what, how do you play this is the question. Hmm. I think... I think they're going to stick with him because he's a plus one and he's a three. They're going to play for the tr traditional double play if they can get it. So Fetty to Dominic Smith. 6-1. Oh, automatic star line to a righty, but not to a lefty. It's a blank. We go to Dominic Smith's card. 5-1. Ground ball to second. They could get the double play. He's a 3. They were playing halfway. Makes it a 4. He's a plus 1. Makes it a 5. The pivot is a 0. So anything other than a 6, and they get out of it on a double play. And they do. So they played it right. 4-6-3. Double play. And somehow... The Nationals get out of it without any damage after this. One run, it was earned. Well, maybe it wasn't. I have to calculate that and figure out if it's earned or not. I don't know. One run on one hit, one error, and they left them loaded. So Fetty, I think he's going to top off at one inning, and he's going to give up the one run on the one hit, on the one walk. Actually, two walks, no strikeouts. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. Mets now lead it four to three, and we need a new pitcher for Lugo. And they got a couple of lefties coming up themselves in Soto and Para. So the Mets may, in fact, go to their only lefty out of the pen, Zamora. Even though he's untested, they're going to go to Daniel Zamora, the lefty, playing the percentages. They're going to go to Zamora. to face Juan Soto. Lefty on lefty matchup. Some more are the only lefty they have. But this is the time they need to use him against the two out of three lefties at the plate. So Soto homered his last time up, but he has much less home run chance against a lefty. Zamora, 2-4. That's a range play at Nationals Park. 5-2. That's a double to center field unless Nimmo can get it. He's, Nimmo is a three. And he does get it, so Nimmo takes away a double from Juan Soto, saving Zamora's bacon temporarily. Here's Rendon. He struggled three strikeouts in a row, looking for bigger and better things. 1-4 is a walk plus, and he will draw the base on balls. So Rendon, as now the tying run is aboard, he's going to attempt of one, but he can't get a jump. And that will bring up Gerardo Parra. 2-6. He's not tired, so there's no single. Actually, you know what? He is tired because he can only face two batters. I just noticed this. He can only face two batters. He is as tired. That's an S1. He's going to have to come out of the game now. And that's a base hit for Para. And on S1, to get from first to third, you have to have a four base running rating. Soto runs at a three, which means he has to stop at second. I'm sorry, Rendon, not, not Soto. Rendon's a three. He has to stop at second. So runners at first and second, and that's it for Zamora. He goes a third of an inning, gives up a hit and a walk. Don't know about the runs, but he has to come out because he hit the fatigue check. So that means he's exhausted. And Dozier, the batter for the Nationals, so the Mets going to a righty out of the pen, and they will go to Jairus Familia, the right-hander, to try to finish out the inning. So Jairus Familia, kind of the setup guy, supposedly, for Diaz. We'll see. Familia is on. To face Dozier, runners at first and second. There are no strategy rolls on this one because he has no pickoff attempt. Infield is halfway. 5-4, that's a potential error on a throw. Dozier, 5-5. That is a single pass third, so there's no throw needed on that, so there's no error. 
we'll check and see if anybody can score. I think on an S5, you have to have a six to score, so Rendon has to stop at third. So the bases are juiced with only one out for Jan Gomes. Familia Mets playing for the double play, playing halfway for the double play. He is a two and Familia is a plus one, so at least a four on a double play chance. So we'll see if they can get it. 6-1 is the ballpark card. We're going to Nationals Park for Jan Gomes. 1-4, and that's a rare play. So we've got the bases loaded with one out on a rare play. So we go to the rare play chart with the bases juiced. I don't think I've done that before, so this will be new territory. Bases are loaded. Bases loaded, rare play chart, and the number is a 12. How about that? Bases loaded and a 12. And there's one out. So we go to the one here. It says, high fly ball to left center field. Outfielders converge on batter's drive into the gap. They collide and ball gets between them to the wall, clearing the bases. Left fielder is still down. Center fielder chases the ball. If batter's speed is higher than center fielder's arm, he scores on inside the park home run. His speed is a two. The outfielder arm is a is a one, so I'm not going to play that. I'm just going to count it as a double that clears the, or is it a triple? I guess it's a triple. Oh, I'm sorry. If not, he is out at third, so I'm not sure how to resolve that because you got different ratings. Let's see. Nemo's a plus one, he's a two, so I'm gonna play it like to do inside pitch. It means his base run range is a three, and he's out at third. Okay, so that's the way we're gonna play it. Gomes doubles, but he's out trying to go to third, and that's gonna be scored eight to four to five. But the other three runners all score, clearing the bases as Nemo Nemo and McNeil collided and the ball hit between them. It clears the bases. Two of those runs charged to Zamora. The other one is charged to Familia. Nationals now lead it by the score of six to four. And just like that, how quickly the fortunes have changed on that rare play. So here's Defoe. Familia to Defoe, two, four. Blank, we go to Defoe. 1-2, he's going to single past the pitcher, but nobody's on base, so it's just a straight-out single by Defoe. And that brings up the pitcher spot, and obviously a pinch hitter is coming to the plate, and that is going to be Michael Taylor. That will leave Suzuki as the only bench player for the Nationals, but Taylor is on to pinch hit. And that means Sean Doolittle would come in the ninth to try to save it. So Taylor, the pinch hitter against Familia. Familia, this will be his fourth batter, so he can't go anywhere past this without being tired. Uh, that's strategy roll, nothing happening. Familia, 2-2, two -two, strikeout plus, he got him. So Taylor is out and the inning's over. But three runs come in for the Nationals on one, two, three, four hits. No errors and a man left. So we go to the ninth. Nationals now have scored six runs in the last three innings, mostly off the Met bullpen. And we go to the top of the ninth. Last chance for the Mets. Finish the number on Familia. He goes two-thirds of an inning. And he gives up three hits and a run. No walks and a strikeout. If the score stays the way it is, Zamora would be the losing pitcher. And Fetty would actually get the win. But it's Doolittle time for the Nationals. Sean Doolittle is on to try to save this game. Six to four Nationals, top of the ninth. Sean Doolittle back out to try to secure a save. And if I'm not mistaken, let's see what his last save total is. Doolittle has 11 saves. He's going for save number 12. Going for save number 12, and it's the top of the order. McNeil, Rosario, and Cano 
against Doolittle. 5-6, hit by pitch. 17, that's 27. So he's, a, he's ejected. Remember, that was the story back here. We said anybody get hit by a pitch, it's automatic ejection. Doolittle is gone. So he hits McNeil. I don't think it was intentional, but it doesn't matter. They're, they're chucking him. They were chucking him. So Doolittle has to leave, and they got to find somebody else to try to save the game. Let's see who they want to go to. I, I'm thinking they're going to go to Wander Suero. It's either him or Bearclaw. I think Suero is a better option. So Wander Suero will be on because Doolittle is out of there. All right, so Doolittle ejected. And Rosario steps to the plate. If they were down just one run, he might bunt. But being down two runs, you kind of have to let him swing away. Let's check strategy roll. Nothing will happen on Suero. Suero to Rosario, infield halfway. 1-5, blank against a right-hander. Rosario, 1-5 again. He's going to single pass second. So could the Nationals bullpen blow another one? We shall see. S4, to get from first to third, you need a three base running rating. And McNeil, I'm sure, has that. He does. He is a three. So McNeil will take third. Although his run's kind of inconsequential. Rosario is the main one to worry about. Let's check Rosario. His attempt is a four. Plus one is a five. So five or more, or five or less, he can get a chance to steal. It's a one, so he's got a chance to steal and get in a scoring position. So Rosario, stolen base range of 13. Plus one from Suero makes it a 14. Minus one from Gomes is a 13. Big chance here if he gets caught stealing. Looks pretty stupid. But if he can steal it, then they will have both the time runs in scoring position with nobody out. 1 to 13, he's going to go. And they got him. Caught stealing. How do you like that? Boy, a big gamble by Rosario, and it did not pay off. So, boy, what a throw by Gomes. There's one away. McNeil held it third. So now... Cano is up. Infield now is back for the Nationals. They'll give up the run to get the out. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Suero, 6-4 is the ballpark card. We're going to Nationals Park. 6-1. That's a home run to the pull side. That's an 8. He's a 9. It is gone. It is gone. We got a tie game. Robinson Cano is second home run of the game. And the Nationals' bullpen has blown it again. And, boy, that caught stealing just cost the Mets the lead. But they do tie it on the two-run homer. So charge Doolittle with one of those runs, and the other one is charged to Suero. Cano now with his second home run of the game, his 10th of the season. RBI number 38 and 39. Tie game. We are tied at six. And here is Alonzo. 4-4, four, four, ball one on the wild pitch. Try again. 3-1, strikeout chance. 17 is too high. Alonzo gets the swing. 4-2, and that's a fly to center for out number two. So two down, and this will be the fourth batter for Suero, last batter before he gets tired. It is Conforto. 4-3, and that's an automatic single right there against the lefty. That's an automatic single. So Suero is tired. Let's see if Conforto can get a jump. He cannot. And that brings up Ramos. They're going to let Suero pitch to Ramos even though he's tired. 2-1 is a range play at Nationals Park. 6-3 is a star 1, which is a ground ball to short. The range is Defoe. He's a 2. And he can't get to it. It's a base hit. S6. And on S6 to get to third from first... You have to have a five, and Conforto only has a four. But there are two outs. That makes him a five, so he does get the third. So runners are at the corners with two down now, and Nimmo the batter. And they have no more lefties out of the pen. Suero is tired. Do you leave Suero in, or do you bring in, bring in Barraclaw to try to get out of this? I think you're going to have to go to Barraclaw so you have a fresh pitcher because you don't want to hit those fatigue rolls. 
And also Swero has, if you notice on Swero, he's got a lot of potential pickoff errors and stuff. You don't want to have him throw it away. So not with a lot of confidence, but they will bring in Kyle Bearclaw. And he becomes pitcher number pitcher number eight for the Nationals. Only Joe Ross is left in the bullpen. So Bearclaw in a tough situation. Runners on the corners. Ramos has no attempt at all. So the only strategy roll chance is a balk. And we didn't get a 20, so there's no balk. All right, so runners on the corners for Brandon Nemo. Bearclaw, 2-2, two, two, strikeout chance, 8. He got him. So Bearclaw gets the strikeout of Nemo to end the inning. But for the Mets, they pick up two runs. They do it on four hits, no errors, and they left two on base. So we go to the bottom of the ninth, tied at six. And now, who do you turn to if you're the Mets out of the bullpen? Who do you turn to out of the bullpen? Let's check and see. And the pitcher spot's going to come up second, so they could potentially think about a double switch if they wanted to go to Gesellman. Let's take a look here. Gesellman. Well, he can only pitch to five batters, so he's not going to, we're not going to double switch it. He's a one inning guy, so. Gesellman is going to be on for the Mets. And he, his job is to keep it right where it is. He's got to face the top of the order. Eaton, Robles, and Soto, but there are no other left-handers on the bench for the Mets. In fact, they've only got Gagnon, Bachelor, and Diaz remaining in the bullpen, all three right-handed. And they're trying to save their closer for a save situation. DeSelman to Eaton, 1-5, strikeout chance, got him. One down, that brings up Victor Robles. 4-1, that's a range play. We go to Robles' card. 2-1, ground ball to second. The range of Cano is a 2. And he gets to it. So Cano makes the play. 2 down for Juan Soto. Selman, 2-5, blank. We go to Soto's card. 4-6, that's a single pass first. So Soto, the winning run is aboard. His attempt is a 1, but Selman's a minus 1, so no attempt. And that'll bring up Rendon. No strategy roll because there's nothing on his card there. So Rendon would like to make up for his three strikeouts. He's got a big chance to do it right here. Be a hero. 5-5. Five, five. Strikeout chance. He struck out again. That is the golden sombrero for Mr. Rendon. He has struck out all four times. And we got free baseball here at Nationals Park. Free baseball. And Kyle Bearclaw back out. He will be facing Frazier and a pinch hitter. And only pinch hitters on the bench for the Mets are right-handed. And J.D. Davis has picked up a bat. So J.D. Davis will hit. He will hit for Giselman. So Giselman's day is done. So it'll be Frazier, Davis, and McNeil to face Bearclaw. The Todd Father. 2 3, walk plus, and he will draw a leadoff walk. Not what Bearclaw wanted. That's a leadoff walk. Frazier has no attempt, but we'll check for a balk. Nothing happening there. Here's JD Davis. Infield is halfway. Bearclaw, 3 5. That's a strikeout chance. 15, though, is too much, so Davis gets the swing. 2 4, ground ball to short, chance for a double play, but Bearclaw is a minus two. He's a plus three. So that's a net of one. They were playing halfway. Gives him a two. Pivot is a zero. One to two for a double play. And to six means runner advances. So that's going to be just a four, three ground out with Frazier going to second base. So Frazier, the go-ahead run is now in scoring position. Run rate is a three. So that's pretty much better than what they got. On any, no one on the bench is any better. Pretty much. I mean, they could bring in Hechevarria. He's a four. But then you lose the offense. So I think you're going to stick with Frazier. 
All right, chance for a balk again for Bear Claw, but nothing's happening. Here's McNeil. Bear Claw, 3-3, three, three, strikeout chance. He got him. It's a six, and that's a six. Struck him out. Two down. Here's Rosario, and this will be... Well, that was batter four, so now he is... Bear Claw is tired. This is his fifth batter, so he is tired. So they're going to take the chance and let him pitch to Rosario. Strategy roll. Nothing happening. Bear Claw to Rosario. 6-1. Home run question mark. 1-9. to nine. That passes. Rosario gets a chance for a home run on a 1-5. to five. 18. It will not do it, but he does get the swing. 2-3. He's going to ground. He's going to single. I'm sorry. I was reading this backwards. Split versus a right-hander is a single pass second base. This could score the run on an S4 to score from second base. All he needs is a two. Frazier's a three, plus their two outs makes him a four. So he will score. RBI single for Rosario, and the Mets lead it seven to six. Strategy roll here for Steele, and he's got an attempt of four. So he will try to steal. Rosario's a 13. Bear Claw's a minus one, makes him a 12. He's a minus one, makes him an 11. One to 11, he'll steal it. And he's caught stealing. That's going to end the inning. But the Mets get the run they needed on a hit. No errors and nobody left. We go to the bottom of the 10th. Mets now lead it 7 to 6. And Edwin Diaz is trotting in from the bullpen to try to save it for the Mets. Finish off to Selman. He went one inning, gave up a hit, nothing else, and two strikeouts. So he certainly did his job, but now it's up to Diaz to do his. And he's got to face Para Dozier and Gomes for the Nationals. Seven to six, Mets, bottom of the 10th. Edwin Diaz coming on to face Para Dozier and Gomes. Only batter on the bench is Suzuki as a pinch hitter. So if he gets to the pitcher spot, they will use Suzuki as a pinch hitter. Diaz, 4-2. Possible error on a ground ball. Para, 5-5. Five, five. Is a ground ball to short. That's a 2. Rosario's a 7. That's a boot. E6. So Rosario was the hero getting the base hit, but now he's kind of the GOAT. On the E6, Para is aboard. He's going to attempt a 4 plus the 1 from Diaz. Makes him a 5. 20, nothing happening. There's no balks or pickoff chances. Here's Dozier. He is a 3 bunter if they wanted to go that route. You know what? I think they're going to bunt. They're going to bunt. 3-3 three, three is a range play. So we've got a range play on this bunt. He's a 3, becomes a 2. 2 and a 6 is a good bunt. Two and a six is a good bunt. The three is the first baseman, Alonzo. But we got a range play on Alonzo. He's a four. Can he get to it? He can. So it's just going to be a, he's just going to tag the runner. Actually, no, he's going to throw it to Cano covering since it's a range play. And Para will take second base. So Para is at second. He's a tying run with one out here in the bottom of the tenth. Jan Gomes, the batter, he doubled his last time up. Diaz, 6-1, blank against a right-hander. Go to Gomes. 4-1. He's going to single to left field. Will that score Para? McNeil is a minus one arm. Para is a three. The score on a single to left, you add one, gives him a four. But then the minus one from McNeil makes it a three. One to three, and we got a tie game. Nope, it's a four. He's got a hold. So Para put on the brakes in a hurry. Puts runners on the corners with one out. Gomes does have an attempt of one plus the one there is a two, and he's, he's guaranteed to get it if pretty much guaranteed to get it if he gets the jump. He does not. So he wants to stay put for Wilmer Defoe. Wilmer Defoe, the batter. And this is the fourth batter for Diaz. He's going to be tired after this batter. Infield is. Let's see how they want to play this. Defoe is a two, but they's a minus one on the double play. They're going to play the infield in. They're going to play the infield in. They don't trust that they can turn the double play. They're going to play the infield in. Diaz needs a strikeout, really. 
and he might get it. 5-4 is a strikeout plus, so he struck him out. That was a huge strikeout. So two down, and now we got the pinch hitter, Kurt Suzuki, last man on the bench for the Nationals. They've used everybody else. So Kurt Suzuki, the pinch hitter. Kurt Suzuki in a big spot, and Diaz is tired on top of that. So keep that in mind. He is tired. As this is batter number five for him to face, but they're going to have to stick with him all the way. We'll check for the strategy roll. Nothing going on there. All right. Diaz to Suzuki. 5-3 is a range play at Nationals Park for Suzuki. 2-3. Two, 2-3 three. Two, three is a single plus to center field. That would tie the game, but it is a range play for Nimmo. If Nimmo can get to this, he would take the hit away and end the ball game. Three or less, and the game is over. It's a six. He cannot get to it. It's a base hit that will score Para to tie the game. Gomes will go to third automatically. Now the question is, can Suzuki get an extra base for a double? He is, Nimmo is a plus one. He's a one to two or less. He will make it. And he has to hold it first. So he holds it first. But the game is now tied again at seven as Diaz blows the save. And now what do you do here? He's tired, but he's the best you have. I think you're going to stick him out and try to get that last out of the inning. Do you bring in Bashler or Gagnon? I don't think those choices are any good either. So they're going to let him pitch to Eaton. 1-3, blank against a lefty. Would have been a home run chance against a righty. Go to Eaton. 2-4. And he flies to left, and we've got an 11th inning ahead of us as both teams score a run. And that's going to be all for Diaz. He goes one inning, gives up two hits. The run was unearned thanks to the error by Rosario. He did get a strikeout. But we go to the 11th. We go to the 11th, tied at 7. And now it's becoming a battle of attrition as we go to the Nats' bullpen. And see who they've got left in their bullpen. They got Joe Ross. That's it. So Joe Ross, there's no no choice here. It's Joe Ross or bust at this point. You have no choice but to use Joe Ross. Good thing for the Nationals. He is, well, can face six batters. He is a starter sometimes too. So you would think he would be able to do something like that. But we'll see. He's going to be facing Cano, Alonzo, and Conforto here in the top of the 11th. Joe Ross is on to face Cano. Top of the 11th, tied at 7. Both bullpens have blown leads. Ross, 1-6. Strikeout chance, 5. He got him. Cano is out of there. One down. Brings up Pete Alonzo. 6-6. Six, six. That's a ball. Try again. 5-6. Ballpark card going to Nationals Park. 2-3. And that's a single plus. Can Alonzo stretch it? Let's see. He's a 2. The outfielder center fielder arm is a minus 1. So this has to be a 1 for him to make it. 6. He's out. 2-5. through five, He holds. Now he has to hold with a single. So Alonzo, a 1-out single for Pete Alonzo. He has no attempt. So he won't be going anywhere. We'll roll strategy for Joe Ross. Nothing happening. Ross to Conforto, infield halfway. 3-6, strikeout chance, 8, got him, 2 down. Now the infield can go back to normal for Wilson Ramos. Nothing on the strategy roll. 6-1, that's a straight out single, S1. Now can Alonzo move up? He's a 2, he becomes a 3 with since there are 2 outs. Yeah, but you need a four, so he cannot advance. He has to go to second and stop. So runners at first and second with two down for Brandon Nimmo. Nothing happening there. Ross, 3-3, three, three, strikeout chance, 12. He got him right on the number. And the inning's over. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two left. We go to the bottom of the 11th. Still tied at seven, and we need a new pitcher for the Mets. And that new pitcher will be it's either going to be Bachelor or Gagnon. 
They're both horrible. Bachelor has an ERA of 6.95. Gagnon has an ERA of 8.37. So pick your poison. You kind of have to go with the lesser of the two evils, I guess. And Gagnon will be on. I'm sorry, Bachelor will be on. Bachelor is on. It only leaves Gagnon in the bullpen. And he'll be facing Robles, Soto, and Rendon, heart of the order. Here in the bottom of the 11th, tied at 7. 4-4 four, four is a range play at Nationals Park. 4-2, ground ball to third, range of Frazier. He's a 3. And he gets to it, no problem. One down. Brings up Juan Soto. 6-5, possible error on a ground ball. Soto, 2-3, grounder right back to the pitcher, but he's got a zero error rating, so he will make the play. Two down. And that brings up Anthony Rendon. Boy, talk about somebody that needs something bad. Rendon could use one. 1-5, one though, he kind of found the strikeout plus. He's a 5. The plus makes him a 15. That is a 15. Rendon strikes out for the fifth time in the game. I'm not even sure what you call that one. Is that a, it's not a golden sombrero? Maybe it's a platinum one. I don't know. But three up and three down for the Nats. I forgot to go back here. One. And there were one hit. And two, two, no, there are two hits and two left. Okay. We go to the 12th. Tied at seven. So Bachelor did quite well for himself, actually. Joe Ross back out. Ross has faced five batters. He can face six, so doesn't have a whole lot of room here to be to not be tired. Unfortunately for Bachelor, that's the end for him because he's scheduled to bat second this inning. So we'll see if they pinch hit for him or let him try to bunt if somebody gets on or whatever. Here's Frazier. 4-1 is a walk plus. So Frazier is aboard, so they might have Bachelor bunt here to keep him in the game. Uh, we have to go to the pitcher. I guess I have to go to the pitcher card, generic pitcher hitting card, to figure out what his bunt rating would be because he would have to use the generic pitcher hitting card. So let's see what that is. It's got a bunt rating of four. I get, that's the only way I know to play it. You got Because he doesn't have his own hitting card. So the only way I know to play it is to use a pitcher hitting card. He's got a bunt rating of four. So we're going to leave Bashler in the game instead of pinch hitting because you don't want to bring in Gagnon with an 8.37 ERA to try to save a game, I don't think. So he bunts at a four. Drops to a three when you bring the corners in, but first Joe Ross is going to pitch. Well, first things first, we'll check strategy roll. Nothing happening. Now Ross pitches one four. We're going to the ballpark card, but the bunt's going to override that. So we're just going straight to a bunt. He's a three. And that's a one, so that should be plenty of a good bunt, and it is. And that's a five, which means it went to the third baseman, Rendon. So sacrifice hit five to four. And that was Bachelor who hit there. And Frazier goes to second base. So Frazier is at second base with one out for Jeff McNeil. Strategy roll for Ross, who is now tired. Four six home run question mark. One to twenty that obviously passes. So McNeil gets to swing. Well, it's actually a 1 to 11. I take that back. That was a 17. It's a 1 to 11 against a lefty. I forgot McNeil was a lefty, so that fails. So McNeil will just get to swing, but he won't try for the homer. 6-2, uh, he flies to left. That's out number two. So I'm glad I didn't misread that because I was looking at the 20, but McNeil was a lefty. So Ross caught a break there. Here's Rosario. Nothing happening. 1-4, ballpark card going to Nationals Park. 6-1, home run to the pull side. That's an 8. He's only a 5. So that's going to be an automatic out. Fly out to left field. It wasn't a range play. It was just a ballpark play. So the inning's over. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. We go to the bottom of the 12th. Still tied at 7. And Bashler's still back out there. 
he could face one more batter before he gets tired. But they're gonna try to milk him for all they can. Here's Gerardo Parra. 6-3, that's an automatic out on the star line, which is a fly to center, one away. Now he is tired, but they're gonna try to get him through the inning. Here's Dozier. Five ones, a walk plus. So Dozier draws the one out walk. His attempt is a one, plus the one there is a two. But nothing's happening. That brings up Jan Gomes. Infield is halfway. 2-4. Strikeout chance. 11. Got him. Right there on the number. So he struck him out. Out number two. That brings up Defoe. Wilmer Defoe, the batter. 6-4. Possible error. 6-5. Star 4. Fly to right field. Conforto's only a 2. That's a 9. So... No error there. The inning is over. So nothing doing there. And Bachelor is going to pitch two innings and pitch them well. Didn't give up anything but a walk and two strikeouts, no hits or runs. So we go to the 13th, still tied at seven. And Joe Ross, even though he's tired, he's all they got left in the bullpen, unless you bring in a, a starter. I mean, you have to bring in uh, Anibal Sanchez or somebody to pitch. So, kind of have to just go with Ross until his arm falls off. Cano will lead things off for the Mets. He's already got two home runs in the game. 6-2 is a strikeout chance. Nine, too high. Cano, 3-1. He's got a single. Single to right field for Cano. He has no attempt. Alonzo is definitely not bunting. Remember, Ross is tired, so if he gets a fatigue roll, he's out of luck. 3-3, three, three, strikeout chance, 13 is too high, so we go to Alonzo. 5-3, question mark, 8, 1 to 11 is a hit. That's a 3. That's a single. Single to center field. Single to center for Alonzo. Robles is a minus 1 arm. Cano is a 2 base runner, makes him a 1. Single to center to go to third. You lose one, makes him a zero, so he cannot advance. So runners are at first and second with nobody out for Conforto, who again is a terrible bunter, so he's going to swing away. Ross, 6-1, straight up single, and that will score Cano, and the Mets now lead it 8-7. 8-7 on three straight hits. And this may be the beginning of the end for Joe Ross, and they really don't have any choice because there's nobody else they can bring in. I mean, they've used all their bullpen. They had eight bullpen pitchers, and they've used them all. What really hurt them was Doolittle getting ejected before he, after the stolen pitching to one batter. That's, that really kind of kind of set them up for failure right there. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Here's Ramos. They can really use a double play right here. 2-1, strikeout. They'll take that too, but it won't get it. So here's Ramos. 1-3, ground to short chance for the double play. He's a 2, plus the 1 is a 3. They're halfway, makes it a 4. 1-4 to four is a double play. And they turn it, 6-4-3. That gets them two quick outs, but the runner does go to third. Alonzo is now at third for Brandon Nimmo. Brandon Nimmo, the batter. Ross, nothing happening. 6-5, and that's a straight-up home run to a lefty, but that's a 17, that's an 8, so there's no home run. No home run, but Nimmo will hit. 2-6, he's going to star 6 it, fly to right to end the inning, and that's going to do it for the Mets, but they get the run they wanted. Could have had more, one run on three hits, no errors, and one left. So we go to the bottom of the 12th, I'm sorry, bottom of the 13th, and that's with a chance to win the game. Nationals don't have anybody on the bench to hit. They've used all their pinch hitters, and it is the pitcher spot up. So do they use Ross as a pinch hitter, or do they go somewhere else? Ross only hit 105, so I think they're going to dig into their starting pitchers and see if somebody like Max Scherzer maybe can pinch hit. He's been known to do that. He's a 182 hitter. So Max Scherzer will pinch hit. Max Scherzer is going to pinch hit for Joe Ross. 
How do you like this? Talk about attrition. Max Scherzer to pinch hit here in the bottom of the 13th against Bachelor, who's well, actually, Bachelor's done, so they're gonna have to use Gagnon to try to close it down. Gagnon is on. He is pitcher number eight used by the Mets. Actually, yeah, pitcher number seven out of the bullpen, which means pitcher number eight in the game. So Scherzer, pinch hitting against Gagnon. Let's see how that plays out. 2-1 blank. We go to Scherzer's card. 4-2, and he's going to single pass third base. So how about that? Mad Max gets the base hit. He's actually got an attempt of four plus one there. Makes him a five. And he can't do it, but it's a possible hit and run. They're going to hit and run with Adam Eaton. Adam Eaton's going to play the hit and run game. 4-1. That's a straight up home run chance. That's a 12, but that's a 6, so he misses the home run. But Eaton will get a chance to swing. 1-5. He's going to single to right on a hit and run. I do believe Scherzer's going to be able to make it. We'll see. I don't know. Let's check the hit and run result. Hit and run result. All base run rating go plus two, so Scherzer goes from a one to a three. To go from first to third, you add two, gives him a five, but Conforto's a minus two, makes it a three. So a one to three, he'll make it. And he does, so Scherzer makes it over to third base, hustling. Runners are at the corners with nobody out, and Adam Eaton will get a chance to steal, get an attempt here of three. It's another hit and run. So another hit and run coming up, but it's not going to hit and run with the runner at third. So it's just a straight up swinging away. Now the Mets, how do they want to play it? They want to play the infield back or they can play the infield in. I think they're going to play the infield back. They want they need outs. Actually, you know what? No, they're going to play the infield in because he's a minus one and he's only a one. So the infield is in for Gagnon to pitch to Robles. One, three, straight up home run. And Robles has just walked it off. That's a seven. He's an eight. It's a three-run homer for Victor Robles. And the Nationals win it in 13 innings. Incredible. 13-inning game. Nationals win it by the score of 10 to 8 in 13 innings. It's a 10 to 8 victory. Joe Ross is the winner. Gagnon takes the loss. 10 to 8 Nationals, an incredible 13 innings, a 10 to 8 victory. The Nationals improved to 25 and 16. Mets dropped to 21 and 19. Nationals now three and a half ahead of the Mets. That was a huge game. Three run homer for Victor Robles has done it. They are mobbing him on the on the or at the plate rather. And it feels like September with that win over the Mets there. But they really had no choice. Gagnon was it. And if it went extra innings, the Nationals were really kind of screwed almost. So they really didn't know what they were going to do either. But let's let's get some of the totals here. For the Mets, let's see. They left on 3, 5, 8, 10. They left on 14 batters by my count. Uh, let's see. Nationals made one error. I know the Mets made at least one. I'll double check how many. Hits for the Mets, they got four, five, six, ten. I've got them for 16 hits. Let's check the Nationals. Actually, the Mets made two errors. Uh, see, Nationals left on five, seven, ten. They left on ten. It was actually two errors for the Mets. Nationals left on ten. How many hits did they get? They got three here in this inning. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 11, 14, 17 hits I've got them for. So this is all unofficial until I put it in the computer, but Nationals went a, went a wild one here against the Mets in game one of the series. If game one's like this, who knows what the rest of the games are going to be like. Mets, uh, Nationals beat the Mets on a walk-off three-run homer by Victor Robles. 10 to 8, 10 runs, 17 hits, 1 error, and 10 left for the Nationals. 8 runs, 16 hits, 2 errors, and 14 left for the Mets. Winning pitcher Joe Ross. Losing pitcher is Drew Gagnon.
And it's kind of hard to believe Gagnon was 3-1 and one with an ERA of 8.37. How he won three games, I'll never know. But he didn't win this one. He took the loss in this one. And the hero of the game, Victor Robles. So that's going to do it from here. Game 41 was eventful for sure. Till next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it. And I will see you all down the road.